pH, pOH, and pKW. All right, so before we talk about pH, pOH, and pKW, let's talk about the autoionization of water and just remind ourselves that water can react with itself and it forms conjugate acid-base pairs. Water acting as a base has a conjugate acid, which is hydronium. Water acting as an acid has a conjugate base, hydroxide. And we also discussed that when we multiply the concentration of hydroxide and hydronium together, we get Kw. So in pure water, let's also remind ourselves that Kw is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. And that gives us a way to calculate the concentration of hydroxide and hydronium in solution. So if we do that, then we remind ourselves that we get 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7 for both the hydroxide ion concentration and the hydronium ion concentration. And those are equal in pure water. So what can we do with that? pH is related to this concentration of hydronium in solution. Remember, we take the negative log of that concentration and we're going to get a pH. And so the pH of pure water, if we plug in the concentration of hydronium, is 7. pOH is very similar. Now it's related to the concentration of hydroxide in solution. So that's the pOH. And we can get this value by taking the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. So similarly, the pOH for pure water is also 7. Now, how do you think pKW is calculated? So there is a pattern here, okay? And basically, we're just going to take the negative log of the Kw. And so the pKW of pure water at 25 degrees C, because we know Kw is 1 times 10 to the negative 14 at 25 degrees C, it's 14. Okay, so here are a few more relationships. And over the course of this chapter, you're going to use these to interconvert between pOH, pH, you also use it in other ways, which we will discuss later. Okay, but right now, the, when you add the pH and the pOH together, you're going to get the pKW. And so, for pure water at 25 degrees C, pH plus pOH is going to be equal to 14. Now, sometimes you have the pH of a solution and you want the hydronium ion concentration. So remember, we can calculate the pH by taking the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration. Well, if we take the inverse log, 10 to the negative pH, we're going to get the hydronium ion concentration. We can do the exact same thing with the pOH. To calculate pOH, we're going to take the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. Well, if we want the hydroxide ion concentration and we have the pOH, we can take 10 to the negative pOH and get that hydroxide ion concentration. So we can do the same thing with pKW. If we take the negative log of Kw, then in pure water at 25 degrees C, we're going to get 14. And if we want to go back to the Kw and we have the pKW, then we could take 10 to the negative pKw, and that'll give us our Kw back. And that's useful when we're at temperatures other than 25 degrees C. And we can basically generate the Kw if we have the pKw. OK, so what should you be able to do after this discussion? So you should be able to find the pOH, given the pH and pKw. You should be able to do the same thing for pH. If you have pOH and pKW, you should be able to get pH. And then you should also be able to use these relationships to find the hydronium ion concentration and the hydroxide ion concentration for various solutions. So you should be able to take the inverse log of the pH to calculate the hydronium ion concentration. You should also be able to find the hydroxide ion concentration using the same procedure. You could also use Kw if you have pH. So you should practice with all of those relationships to make sure that you can get to where you need to go by using those definitions. 
Okay, next we're going to calculate the pH of strong acids, and then also we're going to compare that to weak acid equilibria.